I'd like to introduce you to PTZ Cam's ProAnk 1. It's this tiny little box here that does so many things, it may well boggle your mind. It is an encoder, it is a decoder, it takes in HDMI, it takes in USB, it encodes to NDI, it decodes NDI, it encodes SRT, it decodes SRT, and it can do all of these things at the same time, though I'm not going to recommend it, and we'll see why. So we have the unit here. It has a nice little LED display, which tells you what the IP address is and what things are plugged in and even gives you a handy uh, CPU load meter. It has two buttons on it. Uh, you can program them to, for example, start and stop stream for a non-technical person in a classroom or a church to just walk over and hit A, start stream, B, stop stream, and they can do other things as well. On the side, we have uh, ethernet, power, and USB. And on the other side, we have audio in, audio out, um, HDMI in, and HDMI out. The HDMI out is actually the decode SRT uh, return feed from vMix. So if I uh, follow the HDMI out of the unit over to our monitor here, you can see that the document camera is on the screen. You'll see a little bit of latency, but that's because it's SRT. And regardless of what the program out on vMix is, if I go over here, you can now see that um, program out is now on the monitor. So we're taking an SRT feed to that HDMI out and decoding it. So there's a lot of different workflows that we can do here, which is really kind of an amazing uh, solution. And in fact, um, I found that the USB cable for our document camera wasn't long enough to re reach the production computer. So I plugged it into the ProInc 1. So the feed that you're seeing of the uh, close-up of the ProInc 1 is actually going through the ProInc 1. Again, just proving how useful it can be. Let me take you through the ProInc's uh, UI here so that you can get a little bit of a better sense of what kinds of things you can configure on the back end. This is the dashboard and it says um, a couple of things, how much CPU and memory are being used, what the temperature is, uh, how much data is going in and out of the unit, what's connected to it, and a little preview of uh, the, the camera here so that you can see different uh, sources, it, not necessarily in real time. And actually we're decoding vMix's program out. Um, so that is going to be what we're recording, which is the web UI. So that might be a little confusing, but it, it's totally totally what we expect to do. If I cut over here, you can see that it will, it will update. Um, <clears throat> there's a number of different things to set in here. Um, if we go into encode, uh, we have our mainstream settings, our substream settings uh, by default, and then our individual inputs. So we have an HDMI input, we have a USB camera input, we have our network decode, which is our SRT feed from the ProAnk 1, and we have a mix, which is currently disabled, which can be like, say, a four up of your HDMI, USB cam, Net 1, and Net 2. Um, over here is the network stream uh, configuration where you can see the configuration for our SRT. So we're decoding an SRT uh, as a listener. vMix is calling to it. Uh, this could happen from any point on Earth to any other point on Earth, which is uh, pretty amazing. Uh, but uh, SRT is not the only thing it'll decode. It'll decode any, uh, any kind of uh, network string that you can put in there. Next over is our streaming settings. Um, and this is where I have uh, the ability to configure each of the different kinds of streams. So there's RTSP, there's um, MPEG-TS, there's HLS. This is where our SRT caller back to vMix uh, is set up. So that the encoder is in, um, doing an SRT stream of the HDMI uh, to our vMix computer, but this is our local IP address. It doesn't have to be, it can be again anywhere on earth. Here's our NDI configuration. Uh, so we've got HDMI and USB camera on. And there's also settings for uh, adding overlays to videos. Um, there's a number of ways to extend. Um, the, this is where the video mix uh, configuration is done, how the mix is laid out, uh, whether it's enabled or not, what its resolution is, what its sources are. Um, there's also NDI decode in here, which is worth noting, cannot happen at the same time as NDI encode. It cannot encode and decode NDI at the same time. If I turn this on, uh, NDI uh, will, will NDI encode will 
disable. Um, and this is an NDI HX decode, uh, not to be confused with a full NDI decode. A uh, number of other things we can record internally and we can configure how the, um, the buttons are configured. So what, what does a button do? Um, it can start record, it can start our, uh, our push, it can do nothing, uh, it can stop recording. And then uh, options in here, system is going to be the um, main one here. We can turn on DHCP, we can configure our IP address, um, set our NTP server so that all of our devices, regardless of where they are on Earth, are in sync. Uh, and we can also enable uh, Wi-Fi on this. It doesn't have Wi-Fi built in, but that same USB port that's currently encoding video can uh, have a Wi-Fi dongle in it. The other thing I wanted to go over is uh, earlier I mentioned you can do a lot of things at the same time, but you don't necessarily want to do all of them at the same time. If we've noticed the CPU usage here is at 100%, and that's because we're doing two NDI encodes, an SRT decode, an SRT encode, uh, two, two RTMPs. Um, so I am going to disable one of them, um, save it, and uh, that should disable one of our NDI decodes and we'll see that our CPU usage has dropped to a, an average 62%. So we can do a couple of things at the same time. There is no hard and fast rule for what can and can't be done. Um, it's going to depend on resolution. It's going to depend on uh, how difficult uh, it is. So there's, there's a lot of variables here, but it can do many things at once. Um, but that's why that CPU usage uh, meter is there and it is also on the the front of the unit and just to see how this works in vmix because who really uses anything else these days um, is uh, our two feeds here our srt feed and our ndi feed from our um, it's the back of me uh, it's an awesome shot of uh, me sitting at my desk uh, that's the ptz camera that's on the uh, on, on our desk there, plugged into the Pro Inc. 1, feeding the unit via NDI and via SRT. And just to go through what um, the SRT round trip looks like, and to, to mention it earlier, as I said that we we're doing an SRT decode to that monitor, there was a little latency. There were two SRT encodes and one decode, uh, two, two decodes, because we're sending SRT from the Pro Inc. 1 to vMix, which is decoding the SRT, and then re-encoding it as SRT um, and uh, sending it back to the Pro Inc. 1 for decode. So over here in outputs, um, we can see that my output settings are enabled for SRT as a caller to port 5000 at the IP address that was uh, conveniently on the LED display. Um, adding NDI is uh, simple enough that I don't think we need to do that again, but I'll just add this uh, SRT feed. So here's our... Um, list of streams, our stream input. I'm just going to select uh, SRT listener. It's port 5001. Click OK. Uh, and there it is. So we've just added that SRT stream back. So you can see that we're encoding SRT from the encoder, sending it to vMix, um, and then sending that stream from vMix back to the encoder. So you can see there is an awful lot going on here in this tiny little box. We haven't even broached the subject of RTMP encoding, RTMP decode, and then re-encode to another RTMP. There's a variety of workflows that uh, we really just need to spend more time on and uh, maybe you just need to get one and, and play with it. They are not that expensive. If you have any further questions on them, please feel free to reach out to us at US Broadcast. And once again, thanks for watching.